This release introduces several new enhancements to the railing element. So I'd like to start off by talking about uh, railing sketch behavior. So uh, let's start off by looking at how uh, sketch behavior was in the previous release. So if you wanted to get a railing that looks something like this, then what that would usually mean is you'd need to sketch it in several segments. You'd need one segment for um, each part of the railing. Uh, the flat segments would be separate from the sloping portions. So that's um, a little bit complicated and not necessarily intuitive. Um, and probably what you'd rather do is just sketch a really simple sketch of the overall shape of the railing and let the system figure it out, right? So if it's supposed to be flat or sloped or whatever, why, why can't it, um, you know, decide that for you? Well, in the previous release, if you did a sketch like that, you'd get something maybe like this or perhaps something like this, neither of which would be a desirable result. So let's, um, let's switch back over to Revit and uh, take a look at how it behaves now. Now, what I've done is I've just sort of opened up that file I was just demonstrating for you. And um, when it converts to the current release, it doesn't necessarily correct the uh, railing problem. So as you can see, we have that sort of funky railing right here that we want to uh, deal with. Well, let's take a look at this one first. And you can continue to build it uh, the same way that you always have. So if you want to uh, build it in segments uh, like we've done previously, that will continue to work. But if you'd rather build a more simplified sketch, um, you now have that option. So what I'm going to do is delete this railing that uh, we're not happy with. I'll go to the uh, first floor plan here. And what I'm going to do is re-sketch that railing. So go to railing, uh, sketch path, and uh, I've got my line tool uh, here. I'm going to turn on chain uh, so that I can draw this in one continuous sweep. And I'll just start at that end point, snap right there here and i'm going to go past the end just a little bit to kind of make a little extension i'll press escape to uh twice to cancel out of sketching and then i'll select this existing sketch line stretch it down till it lines up with that guy so now i have just three sketch lines making a simple u-shape uh, for this sketch and i'd really like for the system to just figure out uh, how to build that rail so let's click finish um, you can see it's offset slightly, so I'm going to use this offset parameter right here just to shift it so that it lines up over the uh, stringer of the stair. So let's go to 3D and wait a minute, Paul, I thought you said that uh, we weren't going to have these weird funky railings anymore. Well, I forgot the most important step when I was sketching that. So let's uh, select this railing and I'll edit the path, put me back in the sketch mode. I forgot to click pick host. Now, what I'm going to do is um, kind of pan so that you can see the endpoints of this rail. I'll do pick new host, and then I'll click on the stair. And a nice new enhancement here is that it shows you these little arrows at the ends of the sketch line, indicating the direction that the rail is going to follow. That also kind of is a nice visual cue that you've, in fact, uh, applied a host to it. And now when I click finish, it will correctly interpret the sketch and apply it to the host stair. So even if you forget to do it while you're sketching, as you can see, you can easily go back in and just simply pick the new host uh, after the fact, and it will adjust itself accordingly. So that's a nice feature, and it definitely simplifies the sketching required when creating a railing element. So let me close this file, no need to save it. And uh, let's talk about the next railing enhancement, and that is um, how it interacts with multi-story stairs. So multi-story stairs have gotten a major overhaul in this release, and uh, railings now fully support the multi-story stair. So I'm going to use the other option this time. Instead of sketching the path, I'll use the uh, place on stair or ramp. And uh, when I choose that, notice that it will allow me to highlight the entire multi-story stair. Okay, so uh, with a single click, um, I can place that railing across the entire stair tower. Now, um, I've got a second multi-story stair here, and if I repeat the process, it would add it to both stairs. But if for some reason you only want it to apply to one of the stairs within that height group, then all you need to do is use your tab key and tab in and select the individual stair. Now, as an additional benefit to this functionality, any changes made to the multi-story uh, stair tower will immediately propagate and be reflected in the railings as well. So that's also very uh, useful and powerful. So let me close this file. Again, no need to save. 
And now let's talk about what I think is perhaps my favorite of the new railing enhancements. And that is that we can now create railings that are hosted to topography. Um, now, in a previous release, we actually gained the ability to host railings to all sorts of other geometry. We could host them to walls and roofs and floors, and they would follow the slopes and the curvature. That's all really powerful. But now by uh, being able to host a topography, it makes railings even more powerful because uh, when you're working on a site plan, um, you can now much more accurately represent all of those site features that railings are good at uh, modeling, like, for example, placing a fence uh, on your site. So what I'm going to do here is, um, first of all, show you the slope of this site. So I'm going to open up this site section view here. And you can see that the topography is sloping away from the back of the building um, at a relatively steep slope. Um, so now what I want to do is uh, I'm going to work in my site plan view. And I've got this uh, property line right here. So uh, I'm going to actually use that to uh, to help me create the uh, sketch that I want for the um, for the railing. So I'm going to do Edit Sketch, Tab, Select, hold my Shift key down, remove this front line, and then do Control C to copy that to my clipboard. Or if you prefer, you can use the uh, button right here, Control C. Um, now I'm going to cancel that because I don't really want to change the property line. But what I want to do now is start a new railing sketch. So I'll do sketch path and then I'll do my paste drop down and say paste align to current view. Now that puts the sketch right on top of the property line, which is probably not what we'd want for a fence. We'd probably want to set it back from our property line just a little bit. So let me go to my offset command here. Um, I'll put in the value that I want to offset by, and I'm just going to do maybe one foot, and then um, uncheck the copy uh, button here. Because what will happen now is I can tab in and select the chain of lines, but when I click, instead of making a copy of those lines that I then have to delete the originals, um, it actually moves them all uh, by that offset. Now I'm going to go to the line option here and kind of line up with the building and draw a perpendicular uh, to the building, snap to there, and then do it again on this side, and snap to there, use my trim and extend to clean up the corners and finish up the sketch. So let's click Finish, and uh, we'll take a look at what things look like here in 3D. Now, right now it's using just the standard default railing, which I suppose would be believable as a fence, but I've actually created um, another uh, railing type that looks a little bit more like a fence. So I'm going to choose that one here from my type selector. And if we zoom in, you can see that this has got the nice posts and the uh, vertical um, uh, slats and so forth and the horizontal members. But notice that my posts are on the wrong side. So what you can actually do is go back to your site plan. And um, if you kind of zoom in just a touch here, you'll see where the posts are. There's a little flip grip. You've got to find it sometimes, but it's there. And you can flip the uh, railing and that'll just flip it the other way so that the posts are now on the correct side. So the final step here is to host this railing to the topography. So let me uh, adjust the view here so that it's a little bit easier to see things as this happens. And I've got the railing selected. I'll do pick new host. And then I'll just click anywhere on the topo. And just like that, it will adjust the railing to match the slope of the uh, topography and follow along the contours. Um, I love this feature. I just think it's long overdue. It's really fantastic, very useful. And another really huge benefit of this is if we modify the topo and adjust the slope of the contours and so on, uh, the railing will remain hosted and it will adjust accordingly. So um, some great new enhancements to the uh, railing element uh, that makes uh, them overall easier to sketch, easier to use, and certainly more powerful uh, in modeling when it comes to things like topo.